The chicken liver pate is working. <laughs> That's what I decided to have for lunch today. I just love it. They didn't send enough crackers, so I'm eating it fork to mouth, which normally you put it on crackers and you make it all nice, but mmm. All right, so it's Advice Hour here on the Wendy Williams Experience. Welcome, everyone, and hello. Hey, Wendy, what's going on? What's going on with you? I'm chilling, I'm chilling. This is Pretty Tuck from the BX. Pretty Tuck? Yes, mm-hmm. the BX. Yes, Ma, I need some advice. Okay. I've been talking to this dude for about two years now, and the thing is we've just been slotting. What I want to know is, like... Do you think I have to stay in this relationship? Is it going to go anywhere? No. If just been sliding for like two years? No. Because if, if he wanted to go someplace else and you did, you guys would have already said it. Because while you're slobbing each other, I'm sure that he or you or both of you have been slobbing other people too. Uh-huh. But you feel me? Like when we talk, you'd be like, just give me some time. Like it'll, it'll go down, it'll go down. So I don't know. Yeah, nothing's going down except for you all's heads. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, you you got to learn how to separate your one night stands or your jump offs or your buddies for sex and real relationships. Usually, sex buddies don't turn into real relationships, although they're exceptions to every rule. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, Wendy. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm calling. I need advice on uh, my girlfriend. Okay. Not a lesbian relationship or nothing, but it's one of my dear friends, and she's involved with a, in a relationship with a, um, a person that works for the city of New York. And he is very um, abusive to her, emotionally abusive to her. He cheats on her constantly. And she continues to go back to him time after time, no matter what he does to hurt her. Mm -hmm. And I have tried to talk to her and reason with her. And, you know, she has sacrificed her children Mm -hmm. for this man, okay? Are they his children, too? Mm Mm-mm. No. But I I keep trying to explain to her that any time you sacrifice your children behind some no-good man and he ain't thinking twice about you, it's not worth being in a relationship. But you can't tell her that. She's got to learn it and feel it, unfortunately. She can't see the forest for the trees. And so she's been dealing with this for nine years now. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. There's nothing you can say to tell her different. No, I know. Because one day she's going to turn on you like you're just jealous cause, and then, you know, you fill in the blank. Well, you know, whatever. But she does. Last night she called me, and she asked me to do her a favor for him. And I said to her, you know, you must be out your mind to think that I'm going to do him a favor because that's basically what it was yeah and she got all upset and huffy with me and she slammed the phone down on me well your relationship will probably die out before theirs will exactly a smart woman like you is not going to sit around for too much longer around some dumb broad over or for some man no because it's not worth it Mm-mm. and i just i keep telling her you know you need to get your life in order you need to get your children back because her children you know, they don't have the respect in the relationship that a mother and daughter should have. Mm-hmm. And she can't see that. And I keep trying to tell her that your kids will be there forever. That man won't. You're talking to a brick wall. She's not going to understand you. Exactly. All right. Thanks for calling. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Mm. Dear Wendy, I listen to your show every single day. I love you. And as I was listening the other day, I heard somebody write into you about a pregnant friend who is not having sex with her man. Well, just so happens that I'm the pregnant chick. I'm about five and a half half months pregnant, and I haven't had sex with my man since I found out that I was pregnant. The reason for that is I miscarried in July of last year, and although I know nothing, it had nothing to do with whether or not we have sex... Wait, no, wait, had nothing to do with the other. We did have sex the morning of my miscarriage, so I'm a little nervous. The real problem is my friend who wrote you the letter the other day. The truth is she is on my man hard. Wendy, I caught her telling him, oh, you need someone to take care of you. I'll give you some ass. (laughs) And aren't you tired of just getting professionals? Wendy... Um, 
If I wasn't pregnant, I'd beat her ass. I do trust my man, so let's not even go there. I'm not even worried about him cheating. I thought your advice was perfect. She needed to mind her own damn business and worry about who her man is sleeping with. How you doing? All right. Until Ow. next time. There's nothing gay going on in this. I think people just like to say that. How you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I hope the friend is listening. And by the way, that's not your friend anymore, is it? How did you address her? The truth is, she, oh, problem is my friend who wrote you the letter. Oh, are you still calling her friend? So you still obviously haven't gotten the memo. That's not your friend. X her out of your life. Okay, here's another one. Mm. Okay, Wendy. I have been at my job for three years now. I love my job. And hey, let's be honest. Any job that allows me to listen to you on the radio, I'm feeling. Wendy, these past few weeks have been really rough. First off, I'm the only African-American at my job. I don't know how that is, but it is. Well, back in January, they told me that my position was going to have to be going to have more responsibility added. Wendy, they told me since I'm the lowest man on the totem pole, I would be responsible for collecting and discarding the trash in my office. I almost lost my mind when I first heard about that, but at the end of the day, I do need my job. Well, now the ish has gotten really out of control. I've been asked to clean up the conference room after other employees use it as their break room. <laughs> But the thing that affects me the most is that my bosses have now decided to talk to me in a very disrespectful way. They address me in a manner that you would address your worst enemy. They kick ish and get loud and say all kinds of F's and SH's and mother fathers. Oh. Damn, where are you working? I have told them that I don't control much, but I do control how they talk to me. And they always apologize, yet do the exact same thing the next day. Wendy, I'm the only person in my office of all white people being spoken to in this manner and being called upon to do whatever they need me to do. Now, I hate to be an angry black man who makes those outrageous statements that the white man is out to get us or want to make us their porch porch monkeys, Wendy, but that's exactly how I feel. Also, I'm six feet eight. Oh, wow. Gee. Wow. It's a blessing while you're in school. A curse for professional life. How are you doing? Vaughn, you're not six feet eight. You're like six feet five, but you're a jock. You might not be a basketball jock, but Mr. Harper, you are a legendary radio personality. There's only a few good pl places for the fallout of a big tall people including women and I wouldn't say 5 feet 11 is it I'm saying like women like 6 feet 1 and above I don't know people just, just treat you kind of freakazoidy like you know what I mean and he's working in an office with one of those big big man suits and stuff <laughs> emptying the garbage <laughs> personal porch monkey <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, I'm also six feet eight, and the way these white people talk to me, Wendy, they would never um, address me in this manner if it was out of work. No, they would never address you in that manner if you were on the basketball court. Wendy, what do I do? I've called EEOC and filed a complaint of harassment as well as called the Labor Board for, on this issue. Wendy, I said all that to say I like my job because I get to listen to my friends in my head, like you. Oh, he likes his job because you can listen to the radio. That's not a good enough reason. But I don't know if I can hang on anymore. Please give me some advice. <sighs> All right. I suggest filing these complaints, but I also strongly suggest finding another job. And you can put me where? Oh, it put hurts my where? heart to put say it. Where? Put, put back there. Okay. I'm not paying your rent and stuff. I'm just a little incidental friend in the cut as you carry on with the major responsibilities of your day. I wouldn't sit around and take this crap. And even if you file all kinds of lawsuits, just think about what the fallout is. The office porch monkey filed a lawsuit, so now we're forced to keep him here and not fire him. Let's make him clean up the conference room. Let's doo-doo on the floor and make him start cleaning the bathroom. I just, I would start looking for another job. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wish you well. Lurch.
<laughs> oh boy. Are you single? All that hype? No, wait, you're out of, you're almost out of work. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Fall back. What size shoe do you wear? Yeah, what size shoe do you wear? Tall and strong. And broke. And broke. <laughs> 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 no, we're just having fun at the expense of your height. You know what? I'd start looking for another job immediately. In the meantime, let them feel it. Sure. File your your um your EEOC. What is that? What does that stand for? Equal do, employment opportunity, I think. Do they do we have that here at the at the job? Sure. He must have filed before. Troublemaker <laughs> in the room. Troublemaker in the room. <laughs> um do we have a labor board here at the radio? Find out for you. Tina Allen. Oh, that's the yeah. labor board. She's queen of personnel. Yeah. Where's her music? Well, that's not a whole board. But Tina Allen has music? Yeah. Oh, shoot. She's uh, head of personnel here at uh, WBLS, the flagship station of the Wendy Williams Empire. Is that here comes control? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Osborne used to do that job, though. People thought of Miss Osborne as more of Here Comes Trouble because Miss Osborne was like, no do rags. No, I mean, she'd really, you know, Tina Allen is, is a younger woman, you know. Miss Osborne was just a little bit older and really conservative. I'm sorry. And really, we, everyone has it. Everyone is covered by it. It's not a board, it's a New York State Department of Labor. Oh, so somebody outside of here to judge your employment situation. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> Every, that. Everything's funny on the show. Yeah. Even um, bring my Lysol back, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the Lysol train. Mm -hmm. Why is he spraying? Uh-uh, it's $3 a jar. Why is he spraying in there? <laughs> Nobody's in there. Oh, you farted in there? <laughs> no. Don't get out of here. Don't drag the fart. Back. Get out. Don't drag it back in here. <laughs> get out. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> now that they have a rule, you can't light candles in the radio station. There's, you know, those those Yankee candles are good for masking a multitude of sins. <laughs> and now they won't, they won't let anybody light candles. So. <laughs> it always smells like farts and dust. <laughs> 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 all right, no. <laughs> all right, you all. Keep it where you got it. Advice hour continues. I'm going to the fax machine next. Thanks. <laughs> So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't that ask me no questions like I'm a child. It, Don't it, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? The first page of this fax got cut off, but listen to the rest of it. I couldn't believe my eyes. Wendy, my son, was giving my husband a professional. Oh! I'm gay, I'm a homo, oh, I like guys. Oh. I'm gay, I'm a homo, I like guys. I'm gay, I'm a homo, I like, I like guys. guys. I'm going home, I'm going home, I've had it. It's a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> hey, yo, what up with y'all? This is your boy, Shook the Shot. Now back to the best of the Wendy Williams experience. Dear Wendy, I'm currently having a dilemma with my fiance. After all of the relationship woes that I've experienced, I now 
am finally with a man of my dreams. Sometimes we butt heads on different situations, but that's normal for a healthy relationship. Well, Wendy, over the past few months, we've been having reoccurring conversations about anal sex and facial shots. Oh, 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 oh. Of which I have not experienced, she put, um, for the facial shots. I don't know about the anal sex. Um, I give my man all of me. The only problem I have with anal sex is he's very well endowed and I'm afraid it's going to hurt. No, don't be afraid it will. <laughs> and the whole facial shot thing, that's the big problem. Now, see, why is that the big problem? All right, let me just finish reading. I've always been utterly disgusted by the sight of a big white glob dripping from a woman's face, like in the porn movies. I can't even watch that part of the tape for fear that I'll hurl. The thought of my face being covered with a white glob is repulsive. My fiancé feels that I'm keeping a part of myself from him. Wait a minute, you didn't say this is your fiancé. But okay, congratulations. Um, my fiancé feels that I'm keeping a part of myself from him by not leaving this act open as an option. He says he'll never ask me to do it, but it's just the thought. You know, it's been brought up in reoccurring conversation. If it's just the thought, Wendy, then why is it such a big deal? Am I being selfish by refusing to join the facial shot crew? Am I really keeping a piece of myself from him? Or should I just suck it up and leave the option open? Signed, utterly frustrated. Girl, your fiance. Everything is fresh and new. If you're not taking facial shots today, you'll be taking them five years from now when you realize, damn, the same old, you know, that's the way you spice it up. So, you know, I would say get used to the idea that if you don't take a facial shot this weekend, you're going to take one eventually. And make sure he eats plenty of fruit and pineapples that you might even want to swallow. Yeah. Plenty of fruit. See, the whole thing about the facial shots is that then it gets in your hairline, and then you got to get your hair done all over again. I understand. That's why you need to just unclip that mess and drop it in the uh, drop it in the sink overnight. You know what I'm? Oh, you don't use the clip in hair. I forgot. Oh well. In the shower. Get in the shower. Oh, yeah, but it's not that easy for a lot of you know a lot of black girls. We can't just get in the shower and, and wash and shake and go. No, just put the, the thing on, the shower cap. A shower cap? That won't even make him come to a fruition. <laughs> a shower cap? Why don't you just say, let her make love to him with cold cream and curlers in her hair? Damn. Don't wear any damn shower cap. Nobody wants to see you in a shower cap. <laughs> love is love. Yeah. The thing is, is that you're not just supposed to take the glob and wince your face up like it's disgusting. See, he wants to see the visual because men are visual. You're supposed to take it and luxuriate in it, even if you're not. Throw your head back and, oh, and smear it like it's lotion. There you go. You, you understand what I'm saying? Give it some thought. And don't kiss him. No, you're supposed to take it like a porn star. Right. Yeah, and there's no kissing in porns. You, when somebody gives you a facial shot, they're not thinking about, honey, I love you. No. They're thinking about, you are my whore. You are my whore. <laughs> and for that brief moment, you've got to play the role. Don't say, I love you, just as he's doing it. And don't try to kiss him afterwards, like, you know, while he's still try, you know, trying to be romantic. You're supposed to take it, and it's supposed to smear all over your hands, and you're supposed to dip your fingers in your mouth oh. with it on, and you're supposed to wipe it, and it's supposed to get a little bit in your hairline, and then you're supposed to bring your hands all down between your cleavage and back up. And then you're supposed to, oh. you know, like, like you really, like you really love it, even if you don't. And like I said, if you don't take a face shot this weekend, get used to the idea you're going to be taking one. You're going to be. They're not that bad. No, they're not that bad. It's good for the skin, too. I was going to suggest you yeah. might not even want the hot rag afterwards. You just take the apple juice. Just let it dry on your face and take it off in the morning like a mask. This is Heather Hunter, Double H, and you're listening to the best of the Wendy Williams experience. You got to taste it. I have a 21-year-old bisexual male in Philly who is in need of some serious advice. He's involved with a gay ra with a rapper from New York. I can't give you any hints about this person, but he spells it out right here. 
All right, after I read this, I'll, I'll show Art and Shakira, who's our intern today, and Dave. I'll show them a sign, and then you listen for them to either explode in, and maybe Art will give us the world famous. Oh! Or, if you're not so shocked, then just be like, oh, well, you know. I'll give you like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll hear Shakira laugh, because, you know, she's in college, so everything is funny. <laughs> 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 okay, well, he, he goes on to say, Wendy, me and, and he mentions the rapper's name, are still dealing we, with each other after two years. <clears throat> it started as a jump off, but now my feelings are there. He just bought me a new car for my 21st birthday, and he just started paying my rent. Wendy, I'm falling in love with him, but I don't know if the feelings are mutual. Yes, he spends time with me and buys me things. When we're together, I feel like I'm the only one. Sorry, I'm trying to read and write down the name at the same time. I feel like I'm the only one. I know he has a jump off in every state. Do you think I should express my feelings to him? Um. Well, what are you looking for? Are you looking for marriage? <laughs> because, it, no, gay marriage? Why are you laughing? Because if you're not looking for marriage and you're 21 years old, you have a man who bought you a car and is paying your rent. I keep my mouth shut and my feelings to myself. There you go. But let me just show you, um, studio, the rapper's name, because then you'll understand when I say he's not having it. I mean, maybe he's having it, but you'll never be able to walk down the street hand in hand. But Oh, no, you'll never know. No. no. Shakira, this is radio, not TV. We need you to audible. She's laughing. Uh, she's yeah, in college. She's a yeah. silly college girl. <laughs> Dave, what do you say? Yeah. Yeah, see, nobody's shocked. Nobody's shocked, no. no. <clears throat> but I'd still say, don't tell him. Yeah. You better continue on with that car and yeah. that rent being paid and get you a job so that, you know, stack one, the paper. once he and stack the paper and stay in school. Because once he realizes that you got feelings involved like that, and, you know, because feelings then mean you'll be crazy. Like, you know, like driving up here to New York and, and, you know, knocking on his baby's mom's door, you know, wanting to do an exclusive with the blue dot on your face on the Wendy Williams experience. And by the way, I'm open to exclusives. You just hit 95 from Philly and come on up here and sing like a chicken. Sing like you're being poked. <laughs> with a big pink one. This is Heather Hunter, Double H, and you're listening to the best of the Wendy Williams experience. You gotta taste it. Listen to 107.5 WBLS for your chance to jump aboard the party bus to Foxwoods Resort Casino. 7 p.m. April 29th for the BLS One Night Stand. Enjoy the excitement of Foxwoods and we'll party at BB King's Nightclub. Then 7 a.m. Saturday morning, join us for breakfast before the BLS party bus heads back to New York. It's the BLS One Night Stand to Foxwoods Resort Casino. They're closer to New York than Atlantic City. From 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Song. Okay, Brooklyn, here we come. Get ready for the WBLS Universe Soul Black Party this Friday. PS980 Underhill Avenue with carnival rides, games, and many live performances from the Universe Soul Circus. We'll look for you from 107.5 WBLS.